Hey everyone, after quite a few requests, I've decided to put together a little video on how I did my uh, graphite finish that's a little more durable than the, the standard procedures you see out there. Uh, first, first YouTube video, uh, sounding canvas kind of rig, so I apologize for the background noise, got some trigger crunch in the background. So, what this is about is going to be how to get this kind of finish with graphite in the sense that it is durable. This particular armor trooped in for probably about 20 hours now. Um, one of the times it was in pretty decent rain, and the only thing I have done to it since is to wipe it down with a microfiber rag. A few scratches, a little wearing on some of the edges you can see, uh, but we'll get to that a little bit later. But in the end, this will allow you to get a durable finish with graphite, um, and you can look, no fingerprints when you touch it. And we'll get into why and about that. Bit. But I'm um, going to run through all the supplies that we need, how to do it, and uh, we'll go from there. So, the part we're going to be working on kidney plate. Um, this is comes off a PUSA uh, MK3S. And in this case, it was printed with uh, some Pet G. This is actually a very clean print. There is not going to be a whole lot of prep work we have to do to this. Uh, this can be the piece I mainly focus on in the video. This is my back plate. As you can see, four pieces I had to glue together. Um, there will definitely be some putting in this, so I'm only going to bring this part in just to show some of the putty process piece, but at this point we're going to focus on this. One thing I'll say about when you're finishing these, regardless of the parts or the paint you use, whether it is lumen mustard, dura lumen, graphite, rust-oleum, it all comes down to how you finish it or how you prep it. Sanding, primers, wet sanding, all of it. Um, you could have the best paint in the world. It won't matter if what's underneath is it set up right. Uh, in the case of this, we are looking for that mirror level finish. Um, this will give you that real deep shadow chrome and depending on the lighting, it will look bright chrome. And here I got some LED lighting that gets a little darker. So let's run through all the supplies you will need to try and do this. So, First stage is always going to be sanding. Depends to a degree on the quality of your print the part you have. Like I said, this one's not going to need too much. Some uh, light sanding right here. Of course, get off the brim there and around there. I don't need to scuff this one, so I can go pretty much right to primer. Um, the helmet here, I actually did a UV resin coat on it. Just threw that over the top, cured it, scuffed it with some 220, and then went into the rest of the process. So again, it all kind of depends on the part. If you've got some really thick pieces where the layer lines or you had some supports or brims, knock it down with a file or some 220 sandpaper. Just to get it off, it makes your life a little bit easier and less priming down the road. Alright, so now we're going to run through supplies and all the things you need to actually go through and do this. Um, why I pick them, why I use them, and some alternatives you may need in the event you can't get some of these. So, first thing, file. Uh, if you got a rough print, this is great for just taking off the, uh, the edges. Um, I'll use 220. Um, again, you can go lower if you need to. Uh, again, I'll just depends on the quality of your print. If you got a rough print, you may have to hit it harder with some 60. The only thing I'll warn you is that the lower the grit, the more scratches you're going to have to fill with primer. So try and keep it to the don't go too low. Uh, I generally don't go past 180 under any circumstances. 220 is usually my go-to uh, in the metal file. Sandpaper. So I use uh, three sandpapers in all of my armor finishing. 320, 600, and 2000. All wet sand capable. Uh, can pick it up at any hardware store or automotive store. Uh, sanding blocks. So you'll see these are just some steel sticks. You can use paint sticks. You can use popsicle sticks. Um, any straight edge um, and sanding. Now, this isn't going to be used everywhere, but a little background. I, I restored a classic car number of years ago. When it was in the body shop, they let me come in, help them work on it, and I also learned quite a bit from them on getting a show car quality finish. You have the high gloss finish on the armor. These are a key piece of this. Using your fingers for sanding can work if you do it right, um, but if you really, especially like on these curves of the helmet, um, you get waves, it shows, especially with this high gloss and reflectivity of it. So sanding blocks work very well. 
um, running through all of the products. So everyone knows knows this Rust-Oleum Standard Philly Primer. Primer. You can get this in pretty much anywhere in the U.S. Automotive stores, uh, hardware stores, everywhere. It has its pros and cons. Pro, it's cheap. It's available everywhere. It fills extremely well. The bad thing about it is Rust-Oleum nozzles can suck a bit. They're not the best. Uh, but for this phase, it's not too big of a deal. Uh, that's why I don't use Rust-Oleum later on. Um, so, works pretty well. One big issue I have with it is the cure time. They say you can sand it in a matter of hours, depending on your temperature and humidity. And you can, but you will blow through the sandpaper because it will clog up and your arm will get really tired because it takes a long time. Um, I was finishing our rifles last week, was rushing through it, had to sand it within a few hours. I went through sheets of sandpaper just doing those tiny parts because I didn't give it time to cure. Um, this stuff I let cure two to three days minimum. Um, and you will have a much, much less frustrating sanding experience. Um, all of my primers, you will see, I have a gray and a black. That's because I do what's called a guide coat. Um, quick, we'll, we'll go into it more in the sanding portion, but um, it allows you to bring out some of those blemishes with the black. So you'll see that later on. Next set of primers is Duplicolor. You'll see I use a lot of Duplicolor products. One, it's available. It's in pretty much any automotive store you can think of. Um, it is higher quality, automotive grade, sands easier, dries super quick. Um, this stuff you can sand within an hour. And you'll also see these nozzles. These nozzles are key, especially when you get to the clear coat phase. They're very fine control, very high mist, um, won't cause drips if you're smart about it, um, make a huge difference in a final product. Again, gray and black. The, guide coat. the last spray, um, well, I'll say the last color spray is the sealer. Again, this is a gray sealer. Um, sealers are used to actually cause a higher gouache shine. So you can prime it, seal it, and paint it. Um, there's no paint in my, my method. I just go right to gray sealer. The sealer itself becomes that base coat, but this helps bring out the shine for the clear coat. Um, again, you could use black, um, but the graphite will end up darker. Uh, but this method, you will get a shadow chrome and darker lighting, more direct sunlight, it's a little brighter. Uh, but again, gray sealer. Also again, Duplicolor. Does it have to be Duplicolor? I will say all of these, as long as it is automotive grade, you get a better nozzle on it, you should be fine. Um, last bit of paint is the clear coat. Again, Duplicolor, nozzle, higher quality. You can use whatever one you want. As long as it is not an enamel, stay far away from enamels in this process. It will make your life so much more difficult. So, automotive grade, lacquer base, um, could be any other brand. I'll just say these are the ones I tested it with and know it works. Um, so, you know, your own discretion, test before putting on the parts. But automotive grade makes a big difference. Um, I will say it's more expensive too, but it pays for itself in the long run. That's it for the paints. So, now, we get into the next part of the graphic press is where it vastly differs from what you see online. So the one problem with graphite and the reason why you get the fingerprints is you rub the graphite in. Uh, the graphite actually cuts into the clear coat. That's what gives it the shine. But what happens is even if you take a towel and you wipe it all down, that dust is still on there. So if you don't get that dust off, what happens is you grab the part, you start touching it and rubbing all over it. The oils from your hands actually get into the graphite powder, and that's what makes the mark. So if you see here, I am, I, my hands are oily, I'm a little sweaty down here. I am not getting any marks, you see how clean it is. So getting that powder off is, is part of the, the method I use. The way I do this is to use a cleaner, not only will take the polish off later, um, but we'll also make sure you get that powder off without damaging what's underneath. So in this case, I use Chemical Guys Clean Slate. Um, this is a wax stripper soap, so it's meant for paint, not to damage it, but also get any residue off. You could use possibly something like Dawn dish soap. Um, there are other cleaners out there. It doesn't have to be this one. The key is that it is a wax stripping, strong cleaner, but paint safe. Um, 
Oh, before we get to that, everyone everyone knows this stuff. Spot buddy optical stick for applying it because we're going to run into that uh, with the piece I showed you earlier. Um, that one's not really have any blemishes, but what I am going to do is use this piece here uh, because it's going to have some, so we'll go through that process on that. So, the polish. Now, this is what I'll call an optional part. Just how crazy you want to get in. I personally wanted it mirror finished. So after you do the clear coat is where you sand the 2000 and polish with this before doing the first layer of graphite. You don't have to do this. Um, you won't get that literally glass mirror like finish if you don't, but it is not required. Um, but again, depends how crazy you want to be. Graphite. This is the common one you see out there. It is the chemical store, roughly five micron powder. I think this was 15, 20 bucks US. Works great. I've tried some other ones, similar results, but this is just seems to be the go-to in the community. If you've never done graphite before, mask. As you can tell, this one is pretty dark, just from doing my armor. This, this stuff gets everywhere. Um, even if you put a sheet down, it, it literally will go everywhere. Do it in the spot outside. Um, I'll actually use the sink behind me in the video, somewhere where you can obtain the mask. But for your safety sake, wear a mask. Uh, then cotton swabs and quiet uh, rubber gloves. If you don't want to get graphite over your hands, it washes out. Microfiber towels. That's part of the cleaning process that we're getting to. Um, again, this is where we get into the optional phase of it again here. Um, this is the orbital wheel I use in my car. We use it on, on pretty much all the armor. You don't have to do this. Um, this is extreme. I would not have gone out and bought this for this project. I happen to have it. You can go to Harbor Freight or some cheap tool store and get a little orbital um, polishing wheel. It will work just as good. You can try and do it by hand. Your arms are going to be tired, but you can potentially do it by hand. But this will give you your best result. So that's all the products. Um, again, don't have to use the exact ones. These are just the ones I tested and used. Uh, but as we go through each step, I'll explain more in detail as we go through each piece. So now on to the time. Okay, so here's the piece we're going to start with the primer. Um, I stepped it down with 220, um, lightly sanded some of these edges to take care of the, uh, just where the rims were. And some of the rough parts and the supports. Um, I shot the black, the back of it with just black because with the hunter orange um, just don't want it sticking out. Um, so I go through this piece because it's in fairly good condition uh, from a good print standpoint. Two, maybe three coats of primer. Um, probably do three just to be safe. The rougher the print, the more primer you want to throw on it, especially with this stuff since it's cheap and it feels really well. So I'm going to run through. Um, a little bit of time last year. Okay, so I just finished the third coat, I put it on pretty thick on some of the edges where um, there were some rough spots in the, the brim and the supports where I don't want it here and I don't want to go back over there. This part here, I don't care too much about, it's going to be behind the belt. Uh, now this is where we get into the guide point. So what you do with this, this is why we have a gray and a black primer, is that we're putting a mist, I mean, I will say mist. You don't want to spray this in black. We are likely just going to mist coat it with some black. So we'll make it like a darker gray. And I'll explain here in a minute what this actually does. That's all you do. Put the fan guy down there. So now. That's it, that's the guide coat. As you see, it is just a very fine mist of black. Um, now, as we sand it, once it's dry, 
we're actually going to strip off the black and the blemishes where the black settled into will show up so it shows where we actually have the sand. So now this is going to sit for two, three days. Uh, in a couple days when it's all cleared up, we will go on to the next step of the video. Alright, so it's been about three days uh, since I put the primer, the first Rust-Oleum layer of primer on top of this. Uh, again, this being a fairly good print, I'm not too worried about this sanding very, being very difficult today. But just going to go through some of the techniques real quick, uh, and you can see how the, the whole guide coat piece works. So, got the sanding block uh, along with several pieces of um, 320 sandpaper, which is what I'll use on the, the Rust-Oleum level on this first layer of primer. Um, I always do it in the laundry tub with a little bit of water running to wet sand, just cleaner sand, a um, lot less messy. Um, so a couple of the techniques here. So you can go through and use your fingers. Um, you can if you practice at it. Now, this being the back plate, um, not really seen underneath the cake, you could get away with it. Problem is if you use your fingers on, um, say, the shoulders or the helmet, and you sand like this in this direction, um, you will get waves in the shape of your fingers. If you go side to side, it's better, but you have to keep a couple things in mind. You always want to stay moving. You just don't want to hit one spot, and then you'll get like a dip or a wave that will be very visible once you put any kind of um, shiny reflective paint on it. Um, so generally what you want to do is you always want to make sure you're going side to side, fingers perpendicular. Um, and constantly be moving in one direction. The thing is, you always want to go like this, like this. You always want to be moving around. No circle. You never want to sand in a circle pattern. You just want to see, you'll see my hands going back and forth and going all different directions, and that helps with the curve. Ideally, though, you do want to use a sanding block because you want that flat, hard surface that isn't going to bend and cause any waves. Certain parts, it's perfectly fine using your fingers, the, the bracers and such, but when we get to those really curvy parts like helmet, shoulders, chest plate, um, you really do want to, use, you really want to get that glass non-wavy look, um, that is the best way to do it. So uh, this one I'll kind of be doing a mix of both just to show the pattern, but let's get started. So as I start, you'll see the guide coat starting to come off here. So let me just hit the whole piece here real quick. one direction and then I'll go back over it in another direction. Now, take a second here to look at this. So now I've kind of gone over the whole thing and this is where the guide coat comes in. So you'll see here where it's the nice bright gray, that's where I've sanded off. All of these darker spots is where the, gray, the black primer has settled in and this basically gives you a map of where you need to sand right here you can see I've already started to clean it up but over here along the edges especially I've got some low spots I gotta work out you can start to see the print pattern in this as well but the nice thing is as you go down you will eventually get rid of the black once it's solid gray that's when you stop um, you know depending on the piece again the area um, you can leave a little bit of black it's not gonna hurt anything but every little Nick will show up, so you do want to get it as clean as possible. So I'm going to run through this whole piece here. Um, I'll probably go through and time lapse it a little bit too. Now you'll see I have some of these little marks right here. Um, just these are very, very light. Probably can barely see them on the camera there. Some of these, as you get a little closer, you may start burning through the primer. Not a big deal if you do, because remember, we're going to do another layer of primer on this. But you want to get as many of these out as you can. If it's really deep in a spot, you can use your fingers, you can dig in. Um, but it really comes down to. Um, just you need to get that gone because then that tells you it's all smoothed out. 
So at this point, the, the main part of the plate is done. That's that's pretty clean. There's not really too many blemishes in there. What I'm going to do is just use my hand to go around and do this outside edge. No no need to do the block there since it's a, a curved edge. Um, any waves from your finger really won't show up. But again, keep it in the perpendicular to your finger's motion. So this piece is all sanded up on the first wave here. Um, a couple little spots here and there, but in the end, this will be behind the belt, so you won't even matter. You see I cut through the primer in a couple spots. This is no big deal at this stage um, because we're going to do another lot of primer, and really in the end, the goal of this layer was really just to fill up all those fine cracks. Um, well, cracks, scratches from any previous sandy along with all the layer lines. But at this point, this thing is extremely smooth. The only scratches that will be in this will be from the lower grit sandpaper, which is All right, so the piece is all dried off, cleaned up, ready for the next round of primer. Um, it's going to be kind of tough to see on the camera here, but you can tell how smooth this piece is. There are no layer lines visible just from the first round of primer. Um, let's see if I can get the camera to focus on this here. The You can kind of see where I did cut through and where some of the primer has settled down into the layer lines a bit. Again, the stage cutting through the plastic is no big deal. We're going to hit this another round of primer. If you get any spots like that, put a little extra in that spot. But at this point, I will be using and moving over to the, the Dupacolor uh, paints or Dupacolor um, primers. So I will be doing the both gray sand or sealer primer from Dupacolor along with the, the black one just for the guide coat. It is the exact same process as before. I will do three coats of primer, light and this coat of black. Um, I will do, again, depending on the piece, roughly three rounds of primer. This piece, uh, two would probably be enough, but I'm going to do three just for the heck of it. Um, so I'm going to go through and do that now. I'm not going to show it on video because it's exactly what you saw before. And we'll come back when this is all primed up. All right, I just finished doing the second round of primer with the Dupacolor paints on this piece literally five minutes ago, and I can already handle it and touch it. Um, Per the can, you can sand it within 30 minutes. Um, I generally wait at least a, a few hours and I will go through and sand this tomorrow and, and go on to the next part of the video. Uh, but one of the things I did want to show here is this piece done with the spray with the Dupacolor with the automotive grade nozzles on it. This is my back plate that was done with Rust-Oleum and I'm still waiting for it to dry up. Just to show the difference in the, the nozzle spray where you can see this one is much smoother on the black with the guide coat where this has got a lot of the dots and blotchiness. This is why I'm not a huge fan of the Rust-Oleum nozzles where the automotive ones in the primer phase doesn't matter too much um, but when you get into the clear coat and sealer side of this it makes a big difference on the final finish. So just something worth noting. Uh, so we'll be back tomorrow and go through the sanding and then we'll go into the sealer and the clear coat phase. All right, so on to the next round of sanding here. So this piece has been now drying for a day. This is with the Dupacolor second round of primer. Um, and basically the 
this exact same process as the last one. So in this case, I have 600 grit sandpaper, um, wet sand capable, sanding stick, same thing, going to be the same patterns. But what you'll see on this one is the black guide coat will come off much easier and just mainly because it's a better grade of primer, but also because there shouldn't be much for any indentations for it to settle into. Uh, the only thing we should really be feeling at this point is any fine scratches from the 320 grit that popped up previously. So go through. So as you can see, it's coming off pretty evenly. There's really not much for any kind of deep blemishes. There's a little bit right here where the, the gray or the darker black is kind of sticking out, so I gotta hit that part a little more. But as you can see, it's coming off pretty easy, pretty smooth, no layer lines anymore. So at this point, I'm just gonna run through, sand the whole thing, and get this portion done. So one point of note right here, so you can see this whole thing is pretty nice and even gray, little spots on the edges here. So you can see right there, a little bit on camera where there's a little bit of gray. You'll get these spots that are just low spots in there. What you can do is just very gently with your fingers hit that spot. You, do, you always make sure you keep moving. And you see I took that low spot out and by doing it really lightly and not moving or not uh, staying in one spot, um, you reduce the risk of getting any kind of waves in the final pitch. So see all those spots I had. So now main plates all good, edges you can see where right here I burned through the first layer of primer and got down to the rust -Oleum layer. Here where I got into the actual 3D print a little bit. Doesn't matter because the next part we're gonna actually get into the ceiling. It will cover all that up. The sole point of the primer in this is really to fill any imperfections and clean that up. So I'm gonna finish this piece off and we'll move on to the next part. All right, so a quick recap of where we are. So we have part, this is second round of primer, all wet sanded ready to go on to the next step. You can see you got a very smooth, clean finish. Couple spots where I broke through the layer of primer or onto the 3D print. Again, doesn't matter with this method, not gonna hurt anything. Unless you've got a massive patch showing, it will have no bearing. Little edges like this won't affect it. Um, if you have any spots where you have to spot putty, um, you would wanna make sure there's primer over them because that can show up some color and finish differentials. Um, I will get into the putty piece um, on my back plate once I go to sanding that. So for the next step of this is now the sealer. And just a reminder, the sealer is a gray sealer that the whole purpose of the sealer is to seal the primer and prep it for a top coat of paint. It helps the gloss of the paint to really stick out further. In this case, the sealer is the final top coat before we go on to the clear coat. So what we're going to do is go through one, maybe, you know, two coats. Um, you don't need to put this on thick. You just need to put enough to cover this and make it one solid color. Um, so we'll go through, put a couple coats of this on, let it dry in 15 minutes, maybe 30, and then throw on the clear coat. The, th the clear coat will be first coat, light coat, and then two good wet coats. And then at that point, we let it dry for a few days. Um, let the clear coat actually cure up and off gas. And then at that point, we get into the wet sanding and, and polishing and that finally the graphite phase of this. So I'm going to go through, uh, show the, the sealer phase and uh, clear coat of this portion.
So as you saw, I only put, I'll say two medium coats on it right away. As long as you're careful with it, again, with these finer tips, you've got a lot more control, so you don't have to worry about drips and such. But now at this point, as you can see, it is all one solid color. So at this point, it is going to be ready for clear in probably about 15, 20 minutes, and we'll throw the clear coat on. All right, we've been drying for about 30 minutes now, so I'm going to now go into the clear coat. Clear coat, I will do first coat, light coat, and then two, I'll say, medium to wet coats. Wet coat meaning it's nice and shiny. The worst thing about you can do with any type of clear coat is get dry spray. Uh, you want it to go on nice and wet, uh, and any overspray that hits any other areas will end up you know, making the finish a lot less glossy. Um, one thing about the clear coat, make sure you give it at least 15 minutes between each coat. Uh, you definitely want this portion of it to, to dry nice and smooth. You see very light coat for this first portion so now we'll go back and do two more heavier coats um, in about 15 and then 30 minutes. Hey everyone, well, um, we had a little bit of a technical problem. Here is the finalized kidney plate. You're probably wondering why have we jumped to the final piece without seeing how we got there. Well, what happened was um, my audio stopped working on the recordings and I didn't realize it until this was done. When I went to go edit the video, I found I had no audio on any of the recordings from the point of wet sanding this for clear coat on. So, as you can see, it's finished. Results are pretty good, um, quite reflective on the screen. Um, so, finished product. Luckily, I have this piece. So, what I ended up doing once this happened, um, I went and got the back plate to the same point this was when all the audio stopped working on the recordings. So, right now, this is has a seal around it, uh, cleared, been sitting a couple days. So we're ready for the next phase of sanding and graphite and everything else. So where's that? Um, this is where things get a little bit optional. So what we could do is just graphite this as it is right now. Do the second clear coat, second coat of graphite and be done with it. It will work. It will look good. It will give you a metallic looking finish. And it will hold up the same way that um, all my other armor pieces have. The difference is you won't get this mirror-like finish on it. The mirror-like finish comes from the wet sanding in the next phase. So again, it's optional. Depends how crazy you want to get with this, and it depends on how good of a job you did spraying it. So that being said, if you decide you actually want to wet sand, polish, go through all that, um, this is where what we have to do now is wet sand this piece with 2000 grit wet sand paper. Once we go through wet sand this, we will go through polish it um, with polishing compound. Um, once we have it polished, then we get into the graphite phase of it. So, uh, next part of the video is going to be me wet sanding this piece. I'm definitely going to do time lapse in this because it's going to take a little time, uh, but we will jump into that. Okay, so now we are going to go through and wet sand the back plate. This is wet sanding the first layer of clear. Now, this is just like any other portion of the sanding video. It is, you know, a sanding stick. If you decide to use it, you can use your fingers, like I said. Same straight motions. You don't really want to take much off here. And the thing is, there's not much of a guide. It's not like the guide coat. You don't really see where you need to sand. You just know you need to lightly sand the whole thing. And I will say very lightly, you do not want to cut through the clear coat in this because that will impact the finish. Um, so I'm going to go through, do this whole thing. I do have one spot on here that I could have done a little better job leveling it. But again, um, back plate, not really going to see it much. So let's begin. Uh, I 
if I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera here. So if you look, I mean, you can see where sanded versus not sanded. Um, you'll see these very light scuffs. And over here, you can tell where not sanded. In the end, you just want the whole surface to look lightly scuffed. If you've got any spots that look like this and you missed it, just make sure you go back and get it. And if you're watching the video, you'll see I did the whole thing in one direction, another direction, another direction. I just basically went all the way around, not hitting one spot more than once. Basically, just to make sure you get it in all directions. That way you're getting that nice, smooth, no wave kind of finish. Um, for these other parts down here, I'm going to use a stick as much as I can, but I'll probably switch the fingers and uh, we'll jump over there. So one thing to note too, another way to be able to tell a little bit about areas that you may need to sand more. The water behaves differently on the sanded clear coat versus the non-sanded clear coat. The area where you could use a little bit more sanding, you'll notice the water kind of beads up a little bit more versus here where it just kind of covers the whole surface. So right here, we got a little more to do. now it's not beating up so just another little trick um, you can kind of use it as give you an idea of some spots where you may need to hit a little bit more all right i'm going to call this good all right so the next phase of this now is going to be polishing up the surface from the wet sanding this is to get the super high gloss finish and then once we'll do we basically will go through the wash and graphite phase so if you've never done any kind of car polishing or polishing before look on youtube there are tons of videos on how to do it so i won't really cover it here but basically whether you use powered wheel like this or you use your your hands uh, the principle is the same we're just basically using the polish to scratch to get all the fine scratches and marks out and get this high gloss so we will run through this real quick and actually as we start this i am going to give everyone one quick warning um, 3d prints are not the most <laughs> durable plastic at times especially if you have layer adhesion issues um, during your prints. In this case, this print's pretty solid. I'm not too worried about it, but I have in the past caused prints to crack with one of these. So when you're doing this, don't press hard. If you do have to press, you know, make sure you're supporting this with the back of your hand. Um, the vibration can cause cracks in the prints, so be careful. So you can see we're starting to get that very high gloss on this almost you know really get that mirror like finish on it so we're just going to keep on going Okay, this piece is all polished up. As you can see, there's just some lines, but that's what we're going to wash off next. Now, I did screw up here a little bit, and I'm actually glad because I can show everyone. And we'll see if you can see that on the video. See a little black mark? Um, what that is, is I cut through the clear and the sealer with the buffing wheel. So, if you notice, it's right on the point of this edge of this armor. Um, 
you have to be careful especially on points edges when you're doing the wheel because this is what can happen you'll cut through it now in this in this case doesn't matter it's it's dark behind it the graphite's going to hide that you won't ever see it um, if you cut through really bad in an obvious spot it may be a problem but just be careful as you're doing it so as you see finished product good all of the seam lines we had in the beginning of the video if you remember this piece was a mess um, so lots of sanding all the good prep and there's that finished piece so now we'll go through and wash this with the uh, clean slate cleaner this is to get all of the polishing compound off and then this way once um, it gives it a nice clean surface for the graphite to really cut to and adhere to so we'll go through wash it next and then we'll start the graphite all right so now we're going to clean the part um, using the clean slate the goal of this phase is to get all the polishing compound off but also give a nice clean surface for the graphite that we're going to be doing next so um, again apply this stuff to the rag um, don't dry apply it directly to the the part even more so in, in the graphite portion um, put some on the rag warm soapy water this phase you, you do want to kind of scrub it a little bit make sure you get it nice and clean oil from the fingerprints uh, from your fingerprints and the uh, polishing compound we want to make sure all that's off all right now thoroughly dry this with a clean rag and then we'll move on to the graphite portion okay so we're on to the graphite phase um, note mask you make sure you want to you make sure you wear a mask in this because the dust does tend to get everywhere make sure you're doing this in a place where you can easily clean or contain the dust here uh reason i'm doing it here it's easier to contain where i did it before on my bench i laid paper um it got everywhere so um just be careful where you do do decide to do this um gloves are not for the reason you think um get on your hands it's no big deal it washes right off this is to keep my fingerprints off of the surface uh, because if right now i touch this and then try and rub graphite into it you'll see my fingerprints so um, main reason is just to keep this as a clean surface so graphite you got my little pads here this is easy dip it in rub it on now you want to buff it in you want to press and rub hard on this especially on this first layer since the clear has had some time to uh really uh, harden up and as you can see we're already getting the nice metallic finish the more you get it in in this portion the better it will look if you get any rub off and you will get rub off there's no way to do graphite and you won't this method um just allows for easy repair of it because it is pretty minimal and the the lack of fingerprints but in the end the more buffing the more rubbing the better you get it in in this phase the better off you will be so i'm um, going to go through and do the whole part here one thing i note i did i do notice that circular pattern with the graphite works quite well to really get it in uh, but make sure you're keeping fresh pad and fresh graphite on it if you notice i'm doing really fast buffing right now that does help to get the higher metallic looking shine out of it all right i am going to call that first layer done now you can see right here on the video where it's kind of you can kind of see some light gray underneath you kind of see like these patchy areas this is normal and it's okay 
the reason for this is because you're trying to rub graphite into such a fine such a smooth finish it doesn't cut enough to completely cover again perfectly okay because we're going to be going over this again with another clear coat so it's perfectly fine don't worry about it um, that will get covered up here in the next round overall it came out pretty good pretty happy with how this looks so now we will go through and do the cleanup prior to the next round of clear coat Okay, so we just finished the graphite. Now we are back to the cleaning phase again. The goal of this phase is to get any of the loose graphite off of the piece. Um, once we do, and we're going to be very gentle about this. Last last phase, I told you, kind of scrub a little bit. This one again, apply some to the rag. You know, warm water. Be very, very gentle here. The goal is just to lightly wipe it down and get the graphite and any other residues off now you will lose a little bit of your graphite finish in doing this that's okay don't worry about it you'll see after we're done we have a little few more of those little hazy spots in this whole thing but goal here is to get the graphite off so we have a nice clean surface for the clear coat um, a note here this piece has this ridge here this is going to be loaded with graphite so make sure you rinse it thoroughly once you're done wiping again see you're wiping it very very little doesn't hurt to do the back ignore my popsicle stick reinforcement there um, it works so gently again rinse Now, if you look, there's a lot more of those hazy gray patches. Again, it's perfectly okay. We're going to take care of that on the next round. So the whole purpose of this is just to get the first underlayer done good. Now we're going to go through clear it, and this stuff will disappear in the next, the next phase of it. Make sure you get all that soap off. So next thing to do is dry this off, clean rag. And then once it's dry, then you can move on to the, the next phase of this. And I still have some graphite in that crack there. Okay, dry it off, and we move on to uh, clear coat again. We've graphited it. We've cleaned it off. Uh, it's completely dry. So now we're going to go through and do the clear coat. So first bit of the clear coat on the graphite is very important this first coat has to be extremely light if you blast it graphite can run crack uh, it won't look good so it is a very light mist coat um, that's really just to kind of lock everything in place so as you can see in the lighting here there's lots of streaks blotches um, imperfections in the graphite again this is perfectly fine it's normal you will see on the next phase how this all comes out. Um, so we're going to go through, do this mist coat. You want to give 15 minutes in between each coat. So light coat on the first one, and then I'll do a medium coat on the second one, and a nice wet coat on the heavy wet coat on the third one. And then at that point, um, about less than 24 hours, give it at least four to six hours. You want to apply the graphite. Um, on this second phase pretty quick because you want the the coat to be softer so it cuts in a little harder so we're gonna go through do this first very light coat
All right, so we're about to do the final clear coat here. This one will be a heavier wet coat. Uh, that way you get a nice smooth finish. One thing you'll note when I'm doing the spraying on this, I'll always do the edges first. That's because when you spray the edge, it shoots the, the spray across and you'll get what's called in the other side a dry spray. That will actually ruin your smooth finish. So by doing those first, any dry spray that does get over there, you cover up with the final wet coat. So make sure you do that, especially on the clear. Okay, so we're going to let this dry for probably about four to six hours, somewhere in there. We'll be able to touch it and handle it, but it will be softer. And then we're going to go straight into the final uh, graphite and cleaning phase, and then this piece is done. Okay, so it's been about uh, five, six hours since I did the clear coat on this. As you can see, um, minus the kind of hazy spots you see and a couple of like the old call watermarks um, pieces looking pretty good um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this on video or not no it doesn't really show up I had one spot that I actually hit a little too hard during the light coat and it actually started to cause the graphite to run but we won't see it in the end um, as you can see kind of the color in the sheen it looks pretty good even with just the clear coat just the color that it gives the graphite so you could technically throw another coat of, of clear over top of the final layer of graphite. For me personally, I like that shinier look, so you want to leave that off. But what we're going to do now is go through, hit this another layer of graphite, and same process. Um, rub it in, buff it in. Um, be careful how hard you press because this has only been drying for, you know, six hours or so. So it's still soft. I can take my fingernail and actually put a crease into it. This stuff takes... A good three four days to really harden up so i'm gonna go through do this now so you can see we're now getting that final consistent look in the graphite no more haze no more marks nice solid chrome look to it All right, there we go. Final coat of graphite done. Um, overall, pretty happy with it. Take a look, make sure there's no spots that got missed, especially on corners and edges. I got a couple spots here. Make sure you get all those really good. So next step now is going to be to go through again, wash it, uh, do another cleaning cycle on it. So we'll do that here in the next video. All right, now, so for the final cleaning, exact same process we've done the other two times we washed it. Put some of the cleaner on the rag, warm water, and again here, um, gentle cleaning. No, no real scrubbing. It is literally just kind of um, wiping it down. Give it a once over in the spots. So at this point, after after washing it, I do got a little bit of a spot there. So after washing it and cleaning it, um, if you see any spots that are thin, you can dry it off 
and put another you could rub more graphite into it at this point any repairs or anything you can just put more graphite on wipe it off and you're good so um soap on there so now it's uh go grab the microfiber cloth and dry it off and we'll uh, take a look at it under some different light here in a moment All right, well, um, here is the finished product. Um, you can see quite well the reflection in there. Um, pretty happy with how it came out. Got a few little imperfections, but again, it's the back plate. I'm not horribly worried about it. I did kind of rush through this one pretty quick. Uh, but you can see you've got the high reflective surface. No more of the um, any of the watermark lines along with the gray patches you saw previously. Fingerprint-wise, I can rub my hands all over it no marks um, so overall pretty happy with how this came out um, just kind of final thoughts on this everything you see here i'm not a professional uh, this is just how i've done it and how it's worked for me um, what i will say though is um, you'll get a solid finish that you can do with no fingerprints you will still get rub off there's no way to do graphite or frankly any paint in this setup that is not going to take some kind of damage some kind of rub off uh, especially when you're banging around in the entire uh, setup the nice thing about this is if there's scratches and such that happen, which they will happen, um, it's wet sanding clear. Uh, just kind of repeat the last few steps and you can go through and fix those up. For the rub off, what I wanted to show you here, here is my chest piece. Like I said, about 20 hours um, banging around on this one. As you can see, I do have a little damage in that corner where my where my Peldron was smacking into it. Um, but the piece I wanted to note here is this right along here. You can see this is where the bangalier comes across. And I put felt in the back of it to kind of protect the armor. But you still are going to get some, some rub. And you can see this gray here is the first layer of the graphite um, where the top layer had been rubbed off. So this is honestly an easy fix. So again, this is about 20 hours of wear and tear. Honestly, when you're wearing this, the, the kit, you're not seeing it. But if you do want to fix it, this is a pretty simple fix. A little bit of graphite on that spot. Rub it in like you did before. Of course, fingers get all get all going there. And actually, I'll use this. Let me just wipe that part off. And you can see, look, it is right back where it's you know kind of before and after is right back where it was uh, if you want to take a little bit further as you take that wet rag that you use with the cleaner on it just wipe that spot off and dry it will look as good as the rest of the armor with the graphite you will have to do this kind of maintenance every once in a while there is no way around it um, if you had just done duraluma or lumen muster and done the clear while you may not get the rub off you're going to get the scratches you're going to get some other marks part of this armor with the reflective finish is maintenance um, this maintenance on this is honestly pretty easy. You know, you do this every few times you're out in it. It's no big deal. It's 20 minutes. It's super quick, as simple as you just saw. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, hit me up in any of the various fa Facebook groups that are out there. I, I hang out on a lot of those. But hopefully this video was helpful for everybody, and uh, best of luck.